Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm so excited to show you this game. This is from the 2023 World Tournament for War of the Ring, and this is actually round two. So I will not tell you what has happened earlier in the tournament because I'm recording these out of chronological order, but I am playing Shadow. My opponent is Fianor, who is playing Free People, and you can see the starting situation. I'll jump into the game. So I started with Musterings of Long Planned War and Candles of Corpses, neither of them playable. Turn one, not particularly useful cards, but I'm per perfectly happy to see Desperate Battle as a combat effect. And my opponent got Power to Great, which is a really nice card early in the game. It can slow down your opponent if they're going for Lorien. And yeah, reasonable roll. I allocated one eye, rolled one more, and then I got a very nice roll. I mean, this action roll is great. Very happy to have the musters that I need to get Saruman and get my armies moving. So I'm very happy with my roll. I think Fionor is probably happy with his roll. So let's see what happens. My opponent starts by passing. I get Isengard to war. These are standard opening moves. They move and I miss them. And then and I say very missed because I rolled two ones. And then I move units from Beradur to Gorgoroth, and then this one regular from North Dunland to Moria. And one unit, I don't know how useful it is, but it does turn on some combat cards. I don't have them in hand right now, but Devilry of Orthanc it turns on, and also Fighting Uruk High it turns on. So I don't know. It, do you do that move? I'm curious. Comment if you move from North Dunland into Moria to get this one regular in there. Is that really worth it? It takes a whole half movement for a single regular, but I don't know. Maybe worth it. Okay, my opponent moves, and this time I hit them, and I get a one. So would you lose Gandalf here? Shadow is definitely getting Saruman. Is it worth it to lose Gandalf here? Interestingly, my opponent took one corruption. So... You know, they do have these two playable cards. They didn't roll any Palantirs, so maybe they're thinking they'll keep moving. They're going to move again this round, so they're probably going to get hit next action, and then they could lose Gandalf. So it might not slow you down at all. Um, all right, I get Saruman now. There's no way my opponent can get Gandalf round one, and then they move a third time, and I hit them and get a two reveal. So this... Um, you know, interesting situation. Would you go into Moria now and get an extra tile? No eyes have been drawn. So you do have a four out of 14 chance of getting an eye, which does nothing. Um, but obviously greater chance of not an eye. So think about what you would do. Um, if it were me, I don't know. I mean, two tiles have been drawn already. Do I really want a third this early in the game? I think I would go towards Moria, but I don't really know what's best. Um, they go the high pass route and reveal themselves in Goblin's Gate and lose Gandalf to the two instead of the one. And now they have, they're revealed, but they have Strider as guide. So they're able to very efficiently use this muster and just hide. And they got three movement and they're ready to proceed. The thing about going into Moria, I had no character dice and I had no Palantirs. So they could have gone into Moria and then been able to hide with this Palantir, with this muster, and then moved at the very beginning of next round, knowing they'd get out of Moria. But yeah, extra one extra movement going to uh, Goblin's Gate, but uh, definitely save yourself a tile, possibly two, maybe even three if the Fellowship, if the Shadow has a bunch of things. Okay, um, so they lost Gandalf there, and now I get Sauron to war here. I don't know. Maybe it's not worth it to use that muster as a muster when I could have used it as an army movement to get my armies going faster. I was a little worried about not having enough musters later, but that that's probably a mistake. I'm probably going to roll two more musters and this is such efficient army movement when I really want to get, my plan is to go up to Woodland Realm and get these armies um, in Moria and Dol Guldur merged up outside of Lorien. So yeah, that's pr probably a mistake. Okay, they go ahead and use Strider's ability to hide, and now I get my armies moving as planned. Um, Gorgoroth to Morinon, and then Golgor um, Dol Guldur to North Anduin Vale. 
Okay, we go to next round. I'm at eight dice. They're at four. I draw into Hat Forks and Goblin Men, which I'm happy to see. A uh, very useful card, good leadership, and turns on the various Isengard combat effects. And Nazgul Search can be useful to reveal the Fellowship. Not as good when Strider's Guide, but still good and lets me reposition the um, the Nazgul as I need to. Power of Tom Bombadil, Mithril Coat and Sting. Wow, they drew it right here. Turn two. So these are this is a great card to have. It's a little early to get it because you don't want to risk losing it to Nazgul Strike or um, even um, Worn with Sorrow and Toil. But still, I'm happy to see it in my hand as free people. It's it's the most powerful card to um, protect the Fellowship. Okay, um, maybe Wizard Staff uh, rivals it, but okay. So I get it. I allocate one eye, get another great roll, and they get two movement, perfectly fine. And they move once, and I hit them on a six. Obviously, that's pretty lucky. And um, but it's just a one. So not the worst. I mean, obviously they'd rather that tile stay in the pool, but um, could have been could have been worse. Okay, um, I keep my armies moving along. They pass. I move my armies even more. I now am right uh, powered up outside of uh, outside of Lorien at Dimmerald Dale, and um, now they take this opportunity to play power too great. So that's obviously great for them to have it, and um, they play it. And now elves are two away from war. I'm not too worried about elves getting to war before I arrive, but I'm a little nervous. So um, I go ahead and keep my armies moving. And I move um, this army from No Man Land to Southern Ravanian and then Far Harad to Near Harad. Maybe I'm going to go to Western Rondor and take Pelargia, or maybe I'm going to go up, go to Umbar and, and um, hopefully draw Corsairs of Umbar. So we'll see what happens. Um, I keep my armies moving some more. I go ahead and set them into um, Umbar, feeling hopeful that I will draw Corsairs. I don't know. I could have also moved South Rune to East Rune, but um, yeah, I don't know that I'm going to end up going for Erebor. I don't know. Maybe maybe it would have been better. Maybe it would have been better to go to um, South Rune to East Rune. Not sure curious to know what you would have done with that extra half movement also could have gone to west Rondor, could have maybe merged these um mortar armies up i mean at this point in the game i'm thinking okay i'll take lorian i'll take Dew. i guess i am planning on taking erebor um that's seven points and then either hopefully corsairs of umbar for dole amroth or come into rohan and take helm's deep so Okay, um, at this point, I go ahead and get rid of Kindles of Corpses and Half Orcs and Goblinmen, which has to be an army, an army card to get rid of Power Too Great, but it is an army card, so that's fine. And um, get rid of Power Too Great. I didn't have any particular urgency to play um, Nazgul Search, given that Shadow is, I mean, uh, Strider is Guide. So um, I'm not rushing to play it, and I'm, you know, perfectly happy where with my Nazgul as they are. Um, yeah, like this, this is an example of, look, I have this extra muster and, um, you know, I'm going to end up using it. So they move again. Um, and I'm safe, they're safe that time. So that's good. I move again and, um, then they get the elves one away towards war. And now I'm using this muster to get the um, South Rounds and Easterlings to war when I could have already been in position and um, even made an attack. Now, as it turns out, it I don't think it really mattered because I don't know that I want to put the elves to war right now. Um, so I don't know how big of a mistake it was to not move armies, but okay, moving on. So what did they draw? They drew Wisdom of Elrond and I will go alone. And I got Fighting Urukai and Palantir Vorthank. So could be useful. Um, Fighting Urukai, I'm obviously happy to see because it's going to let me attack into Lorien. I just got rid of the Half Orcs and Goblin Men um, so that I could attack into Lorien, but I still have this Isengard regular here in Dimmerald Dale. So this is an example of it paying off um, because I'm very happy to be able to play Fighting Urukai on Lorien. All right, they declare into Carrick, and um, I allocate one eye and then get this 
kind of crazy roll, but I'm, I'm happy with five attacks and my muster. So I should be able to put the elves to war, get the Witch King, and um, make some good progress. So uh, they get a Will of the West, which is obviously nice to be able to get Gandalf. It would have been better uh, to get it last round, um, but still good, good to get it now. And um, they start by moving the Fellowship and they're safe. And then I use a, a character die to play um, Palantir of Orthanc so that this Palantir will let me benefit from it. And since I know they want to get Gandalf with this Will of the West, um, I think either they're going to have to give me a ring to get rid of Palantir or I'm going to get a free card draw out of it So um, and put more pressure on them later. So uh, I'm happy. I'm happy with uh, using one of my character dice for that. Me, yeah, I, I think that's the right choice. Okay, uh, they pass. And given that they passed, I know it seems like they're not planning on giving me a ring uh, to get rid of Palantir this round. So I'm not in a huge rush to um, to play my character card. I'm thinking that I will get the Witch King and then play Fighting Urukai so that I can take care of um, I can take care of Lorien. They've already played Power Too Great, so I'm not particularly worried about um, you know anything else. If they m maybe they have Celeborn's Galadrium, uh, but um, yeah, I think chances of that are relatively low. Okay, so I attack into Lorien first. I think because I'd rather have one, uh, two strongholds with three units each, as opposed to one stronghold with three units and one stronghold that's a cakewalk. Um, so I go ahead and put Lorien under siege and that gives them a chance to muster in Woodland Realm, which they do. And then of course I besiege Woodland Realm. I leave one regular here because I'm anticipating that I'm going to take out Lorien with Fighting Urukai and then I'm going to play Nazgul Search and the Fellowship is going to end up getting revealed into Old Forest Road. That's my plan right now and that's why I leave one behind. Um, okay, so they're continuing to pass and I get the Witch King. He shows up in Lorien and obviously I'd much rather have five leadership here. Um, so maybe it's a good plan to just play Nazgul Search um and get full leadership and make the fellowship revealed um yeah okay so what i end up doing is playing fighting or akai because i want to take out lorian um so i don't you know, I don't want them to get Celeborn's Glad Dream. I obviously don't want them to get any reinforcement cards, but my thinking is take out Lorien now and then pivot leadership to uh, Woodland Realm with Nazgul Search and revealing the Fellowship into Old Forest Road. That's that's my plan. Um, is it worth it to try this with only three leadership? I don't know. I, I do have Desperate Battle and... Uh, Feels like I have a decent chance of getting five hits over three rounds with Desperate Battle, plus whatever I redraw. So we'll see. Okay, I play a strategy card. They can't play one, and I get three hits to start. So obviously that's great for me. They get three back because of um, Desperate Battle. And um, they're down to two regulars only. So I'm definitely feeling good now. Uh, happy to see Shadows Gather. Um, depending on how well this goes, I can potentially shadow gather Lorien into Fords of Aizen, have a nice attack on Rohan. So, um, so that's exciting. All right. I don't play a card and then they play confusion here, which is, um, you know, good because maybe I'll roll a bunch of ones. So I roll two ones and that's not nice. Uh, I get, I get one hit though. So that's good at least. And then, um, they get one back at me. So I just took three hits. And, um, I don't like that, but at least I have one more round from fighting or Kai. So I have seven dice to roll a, um, to roll a six and, um, they play heroic death. So I think this is great card play on their point on their part. Now I need two sixes to finish it off on this die. And that's much less likely. Um, I do get one hit, which is nice, but not a second and they get one hit with their leader. So that was a very heroic leader. 
Um, and now I'm down to only three units. I mean, I'm not particularly worried, but I definitely want to finish off Lorien before they draw Celeborn's Gladrium because that could be a real mess. So um, my plan, and I can't continue. So my plan to relocate is not working exactly right. They get Gandalf, the as I expected, late. and no now I attack early. Lorien again. And, um, uh, oh, we forgot that, so the proper timing for Palantir of Orthanc is after the whole action is done. So um, we forgot that after the whole action was done, then I should have redrawn from Palantir of Orthanc. So um, I'm drawing a strategy card, and it's not optional. Um, so we, it was sort of both people's, uh, responsibility to remember it. Um, so we go ahead and do it now. And, um, I draw a strategy card. I drew Devilry of Orthanc and it's a little sad because I had, a uh, Isengard regular in this army and, um, I killed it instead of leaving it there. So... That was a mistake. I think I was slightly worried about Spirit of Mordor, which if you have different kinds of units, then could, um, can defeat you and do a bunch of damage to you. So, um, you know, it's unlikely that they have that card, but I, I, I felt like my chances of taking out a stronghold were pretty high. So, um, okay. So I attack and I have six dice to roll a six, but I don't get a six. Um, but they do get a six. So now I'm down to two regulars. Uh, and this is not good. Um, I don't know exactly what to do at this point. I'm not cycling combat cards. Uh, I want to, I, Muma Kill's not playable. Devil Re of Orthanc isn't playable. And I definitely want to save Nazgul Surge to be able to relocate my Nazgul at some point and possibly slow them down. So, um, this is a pretty, pretty tough situation. I just, um, Oh, so what do they do? It's right. So that's the end of that combat. Now they get to do something and they um, use a ring to move a second time. And in retrospect, I should have been able to foresee this probably, or at least think about it pretty carefully because I only had one eye uh, in the pool. And you really, as fellowship, you kind of want to be moving twice. So um, given that this happened, it, it maybe would have been better to have done my Nazgul search at the beginning, gotten my five Nazgul into Lorien, and then played um, Fighting Urkai. That would have revealed the Fellowship onto Old Forest Road as I had wanted. And so this whole round just didn't quite go as I expected. And I don't know exactly what my odds were of taking out um, Lorien with five. Lorien had five hit points and I had Desperate Battle I don't know what the odds were of taking that out. Okay. Um, but Fellowship did have, three people did have five cards. So you got to expect them to be able to do something. And the heroic death plus the confusion really made a difference. Okay. Anyway, so they move and um, they're safe. And that's fair because I only had a one third chance of hitting them. Uh, I'm happy to get the eye, but. Uh, not really happy to see the fellowship moving so fast and to be really worried about the situation in Lorien. I just attack it again because I don't know exactly what else to do. Um, the, like my ability to get reinforcements is relatively low right now. I already have gotten rid of, uh, half orcs and goblin men. So there are only two cards in my deck that help. So I think I'm just hoping, um, four dice to roll a six, um, and I roll a six. So that's good, and they don't get a hit. So in the end, I was able to take Lorien. It took three dice, several combat cards, and Fighting Urkai. So it was definitely more difficult than I'd wanted. But um, in the end, I'm okay with this because it could have, it, it was sort of st starting to go south. Uh, okay, so they're at five dice. I don't love that, but what can you do? Um, I'm at nine now. They got um, Immerhill of Dol Amroth and Challenge of the King. And uh, I got Orc Patrol and Shadow Lengthens. So happy to see these um, movement cards. They can be useful when dealing with um, Erebor or Dale or Woodland Realm is needed. So I allocate one eye and roll one more. And they get this great, um, great movement. So they got four movement and um, they're 
four spaces away, right? Because they're at two movement right now. They need they need one, two, three, four moves to get to um, Mornon. So I'm definitely nervous about this. And um, so what can I do? They move and they're safe on the first roll. And then I definitely play Nazgul Search right away. They did not use a Will of the West to get rid of Palantir Vorthank. So I'm continuing to get to draw extra cards for my Palantirs. I play Nazgul Search to pivot. Um, I put I put a Nazgul in Southern Rovanian because I know that there are three moves, and I definitely want to increase my chances of hitting them and revealing them so that they can't get into Mordor this round because turn four into Mordor is really fast. Um, I do have Orc Patrol. Um, I have one ring left. I have one ring, which I can use to allow me to play Orc Patrol if I need to and have a chance at least at revealing them. There are four tiles in the pool that could reveal them. So, um, you know, obviously I just hope to hit them and reveal them normally through the hunt so I don't have to play Orc Patrol um, as a card and use up my ring. But that's my backup plan. Okay, so um, they get revealed into Southern Rovanian and then uh, I redraw from the Palantir and, I and I'm redrawing, I'm continuing to redraw strategy cards because I really want to get to Corsairs of Umbar. If I get Corsairs of Umbar, um, I feel like, you know, sure, maybe they have... Um, Kirtan ships, maybe they have Imrahil of Dolamroth, but still, this is a good sized army in Umbar, and I can get leadership down there and and still take out um, Dolamroth. It's very efficient. So uh, that's my plan. All right, I am still happy to see Stormcrow as a combat effect, very useful for taking out Woodland Realm. So they uh, use Strider's ability very efficiently to hide. So they still have a chance to get to Mortar this round. They have um, three movement and they're three spaces away, and their corruption is not really an issue. All right. I get the Southrons and Easterlings toward war to at least threaten Day Without Dawn, and they use their other Will of the West to move. Clearly, they're not worried about Palantir of Orthanc. They just want to get to Mordor as fast as possible. Um, and I miss. So I had three dice to roll a five, and I missed. I'm not happy about that. Um, and then I attack into Woodland Realm. They play Power of Tom Bombadil. I play Great Host, and um, I get one hit. They get three hits back, so elves can definitely fight this game. And... Um, but I do still get two hits out of it because of uh, Great Host. And um, I decide not to press here because why? I think it's relatively unlikely to get three hits. Um, I guess that's my thinking. And I don't, I don't have a playable card right now. Um, I mean, I could play Cruel as Death, but I definitely want to save that for um, stalling the Fellowship if it comes to that. So I wait and I redraw, um, we come to kill. So this, this hill trolls card is obviously a very good reinforcement two extra elites and, um, yeah. Okay. So they, they pass and I go ahead and get a regular elite in South rune. Obviously I would prefer to be playing a mustering card like many Kings, um, or horde from the East, but uh, given that I had a muster, I um, feel like I'm going to need some reinforcements to take out Erebor. Um, I go ahead and muster regularly in South Rune. All right, then they pass, and I muster another elite in South Rune. Is that right? I don't know. I don't know. Would you be using these as musters to get more elites, or do you just crash in and... Um, Hope that these armies, as it is, are enough to take out um, Woodland Realm and Erebor. Do you need this many elites? I don't know. I could have gotten an extra attack out of that. What would you do? Comment. Turn four. Shadow. How do you spend those four dice? All right. So they move again. I'd really like to hit them and reveal them here. Um, I miss. And then my Nazgul gets the hit. So I had a... 87% chance of hitting them there, right? Because those were that was hitting on four or five. So I had a one out of one out of seven out of eight chance of hitting them. So very likely to hit them. Am I likely to reveal them? Uh what is that? That is six, eight out of uh eight out of thirteen. So certainly pretty good chances of revealing them as well. Um, and I do. So I do reveal them. 
And um, that means that there's no way for them to get into Mordor this round. So, you know, turn four into Mordor is very fast. Um, and I think it's reasonable that that didn't happen. <laughs> uh, given that I played Nazgul Search, I put some Nazgul on them. And uh, yeah. Okay. So um, I go ahead and get my armies ready in East Rune. I don't know exactly what I'm thinking there. Like, is that, is that really necessary? Why not? What if I finish off Woodland Realm and then attack into Dale and then I can play Shadows Gather to go straight from South Rune to Dale? I guess I want to attack into Erebor. I mean, I want to attack into Iron Hills so that I can't go from um, so that so that this unit in Iron Hills doesn't have a chance to get into Erebor. I don't know. What was what was I thinking there? Like this is a pretty good army. All right, so they hide the fellowship, and then I attack Iron Hills. So I guess I'm hoping that they don't have scouts, and then I get to take out that regular, which makes Erebor a softer target. I besiege Erebor before attacking Dale at all. And that way, if they were, if I don't take out the unit in Dale, then I get to, um, the, the unit in Dale, if I don't take it out, doesn't, doesn't get to retreat into Erebor. I don't know what me, why not? Why not finish off Woodland Realm, just attack into Dale? Yeah, they get a regular, but then you get this very efficient movement from South Rune, East Rune, Vale of Karnan into Dale using Shadow's Gather. And then I still have Shadow Lengthens as a combat effect. I guess I didn't have that many units in South Rune. I only had three regulars and an elite, and that might not be enough. Okay, well, all right. I'm attacking to Iron Hills. They don't have scouts, which is... I don't remember, like maybe 50-50 after four cards. Um, and I get a five, which is all I need, and they don't get a hit. So, um, okay. You know, I've set myself up. All right, they draw Elven Rope, Fear Fire Foes. Obviously, Fear Fire Foes, not so useful at this point in the game. Um, Elven Rope could be good if they get a bunch of Palantirs. I get rid of Denethor's Folly because I don't have Isengard units anywhere. And um, I'm okay to see Anon they went. It's nice to see a red tile. And um, I allocate one eye, roll three more. Not really what I want to see, but four, five dice, uh, five attacks is still good. And they get a nice, nice flexible roll. They go ahead and move armies. Um, I'm not sure exactly what. Okay, just getting ready for an attack on Helm's Deep. Um, and uh, then I go ahead and play Hill Trolls here because I think I don't have quite enough to take out Woodland Realm in one attack. So better to play Hill Trolls first, which gives me sort of two extra um, rounds of combat, if nothing else. I mean, extra hit points too, but um, I'm spending one action to get two more rounds of combat. All right. Um, they move. I hit them and don't reveal them, which is exactly what I want here because that way they will feel um, an incentive to move a second time. Uh, in case I have cruel weather. So um, I'm very happy to not reveal them there. And I go ahead and attack into Woodland Realm. I play Relentless Assault and they play Shield Wall. And so now they're canceling my second hit. And Relentless Assault, how much does it really help me um, get a, a third hit? Like, yeah, it helps, but it does dish out a lot of damage to myself. So I decide to not take any um, hits and just hope to roll sixes and save my elites for um, pressing if I need to. So I don't get any hits and they get one hit. So, okay, I lose a regular, I press at least, oh, no press, interesting. So I don't press here. I'm a little confused why I'm playing this quite so cautiously, but all right, I get great host. Um, you know, I now only have five units, but all right, they play Elven Rope. I go ahead and put Erebor under siege because I don't want them to muster at the end of this round and then um, be able to get the dwarves to war. 
So I have to attack Erebor um, this round at some point. So uh, I go ahead and do it now. And then they move armies. And um, this is an interesting move. They move Pelargir to Lamadon because they're trying to defend against Corsairs. So the idea is Lamadon to um, Dolamroth next at some point, And then they have Imrahil of Dolamroth. So it's kind of uh, an efficient way of... Um, I mean, it's a little slow, but if you have the time, then you get an extra regular into Dol Amroth, which, which can be nice, while you're also getting these units from Edoras to Westamnet to, to Helm's Deep. So that's cool. All right. Um, I go ahead and attack Woodland Realm now. I think I play Great Host. I play Great Host hoping that it's going to be enough. They play a Sudden Strike because I guess why not? Um, and I get my one hit. And then two more, which is all I need to be able to take out Woodland Realm. So Woodland Realm uh, is now captured and um, they move a second time. So this is what we expected. And that's just the threat of Cruel Weather. All right. Uh, I hit them and I draw three. So this is this is great for me because they're not revealed again. I mean, it would have been fine if they got revealed. That, that also would have been fine. But three is a good tile. They take a random and get Boromir. So, okay, fair. And um, now I have a choice. I can play Orc Patrol. And if I play Orc Patrol, I have a 60% chance of getting something that hurts the Fellowship. And these three tiles are really great because they get revealed and potentially draw um, one of these tiles. So... Would you play Orc Patrol, hoping to draw any of these six tiles? Or would you play On On They Went to get the red tile in the pool? Or would you ignore all of that and just, like, move Nazgul around or something? I don't know. Um, I decide to play Orc Patrol. And, um, you know, 40% chance of hitting an eye isn't great, but 60% is more than 40%. <laughs> uh yeah, what's what's the expected corruption here? We have 10. So I'm expecting to do one corruption, but these do an extra um one corruption. So yeah, it's a little more than it's it's like 1.3 corruption, but yeah, I think I just I want to get these since I have a red tile in my hand, I want to get the um the regular tiles out of the pool. But maybe it's dumb. Maybe that should just be on on they went. 40% is too big a chance to draw an eye. Okay. Anyway, I draw an eye. And um, you know, that's obviously feel sad. Would be great to reveal them and uh slow them down and Mordor and all that. Um so yeah, I, I don't know. I guess I guess on on they went. I mean, I don't want to be outcomes based, but that was a forty percent chance of doing nothing. Thirty percent chance of getting two tiles, though. I guess it's not really two tiles, though. Like even if you reveal them, then at that point, you still have a four, like a even better than forty percent chance, forty four percent chance of getting an eye at that point. So you're still only getting one eye, one tile out of the pool. Okay, so red tiles, good. All right, anyway, um, going on to next round. So they make it to Mordor at the end of turn five, start of turn six, and um, I'm happy to see Day Without Dawn in case they roll to Wills of the West or, or more. Uh, I'll be able to slow them down a little bit, but they do still have two rings. They have Strider as guide. Like, I'm only at um, two victory points. I am, uh, sorry, I'm actually at four right now uh, because I took Woodland Realm. But I, I'm set up for Erebor, um, but I haven't drawn Corsairs yet. So, okay. Um, I allocate one, roll two more, and then they get two movement. So this is pretty average roll for them. Obviously, one attack on eight dice is not what I want to see here. Um, I will get the mouth of Sauron. Um, and I do have... Shadow lengthens to re-maneuver this um, Woodland Realm army into Erebor, but um, one attack is sad. 
Okay, so they move and um, I get an eye here. I thought about allocating a lot of eyes um, at the beginning. And maybe I, maybe I should have because there were four eyes in the pool and that would have, that could have put their corruption up pretty high. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just allocated one eye. All right. So th that's interesting. They have Dane Ironfoot's guard here, but they didn't play it even with the Palantir. I mean, I guess they have Mithril Coat and Sting that they want to play. That's an interesting choice. I guess there are no red tiles in the pool, so better to move now. So I think that's right. All right, they take a random companion and they get Gimli. And now they're um, up to six corruption. And now um, I play on on they went and I'm using the Palantir of Orthanc, so that's great. And I redraw a, what do I switch to? So now I'm now I switch to a character card because I think my chances of drawing Corsairs at this point are relatively low and I'd like to get red tiles in the pool. So I'm drawing character cards now. I don't know. Um, I think because I had so few attacks this round, I figured that um, I needed to get some red tiles. Okay, they pass and I re-maneuver my armies. Um, you can do a swip swap. So uh, I did a swip swap to avoid having too many armies there. I um, am not as worried about um, Spirit of Mordor now, even though it could empty out Woodland Realm. They, the North is not at war. So I will be able to, if they threaten it somehow, I'll be able to fill it in. All right. Um, and there wasn't really another army that I needed to move around. I mean, maybe South Dunland to Orthanc I could have done, but uh doesn't i don't think that really matters i is this overkill in erebor i don't know interestingly they have dane so yeah okay and i draw another character card from the palantir of orthanc and uh i draw the lasai which is not useful to me because if i wanted to allocate more eyes i could have just allocated more eyes okay they use strider's ability to hide again and i get the mouth of sauron um, I wait a second. No, instead I attack Erebor. What is my thinking there? I guess I'm like, oh, I know what my thinking is. I think I want to cycle more character cards. And so I want to be able to draw them as soon as possible. So that's why I'm doing the attack first. Cause I'm going to redraw based on, um, based on the Witch King and I have a ring to spend. So if I need, if I draw into a red tile, I can play it. All right. I play little aside. It doesn't really matter. I'm not worried about this battle. I have six elites in here. So, um, I get one hit, they get two back. I press and redraw Balrog, not useful. So my character cards breaking, um, Little Sai and Balrog Moria have not been so useful these last three. Um, Breaking the Fellowship, I could have played, um, and there were some threes in there, but I felt like the the chances of actually doing enough corruption damage were relatively low. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, they, I, I play Muma Kill here because I don't think that I'm going to end up needing Shadows Gather. And I get two hits, but they get three back. And then I keep pressing and I stop um, playing cards because I don't really need to play any more cards. I played Muma Kill because I just there wasn't another place that I thought I would play it, but maybe it would have been worth holding just in case. Um, I get no sixes. They get one hit. I press. I get one hit. They get one back. I press. I get my last six and they get one hit back. So um, the dwarves did do pretty well. Um, and I don't know exactly w like, was that combat about average or, um, or not? I don't know. Um, I ended up using all the elites to press. <laughs> and so those, maybe those, units that I mustered up in South Rune were right because they gave me extra attacks, but there's certainly a version of that combat where I, 
um, finish it faster and don't need all the elites. But there's also a version of that combat where they play Dane and I, I don't finish that combat. So yeah, I'm not sure why they didn't play Dane. I guess they're just really focused on moving the fellowship and they didn't think that Dane would make that big of a difference. Okay. I'm up to six victory points. They use this half army movement to get um, Dol, that regular from Lamadon into Dol Amroth, so, so they succeeded at that, and they move a regular from Asgiliath into Minas Tirith. I think if I were going to play this as a um, half army movement, I would have just preferred to get the elite into uh, and leader into Erebor with Dane. So, okay, uh, I now get the mouth, having not redrawn anything worth playing. They um, they play Mithril Coat and Sting. So they saved that the whole game. They drew it round two. Obviously, just really nicely played. And um, like now my hopes of stopping the Fellowship have gone down significantly. Because even if I have, you know, red tiles or reveal them, they can just um, they can just dodge it with Mithril Coat. So, um, okay. They, I go after Dale here. I play Breaking the Fellowship because um, I just want to cycle cards and I'd like to cycle into character cards either to like Ring Wraiths or Abroad, which can commands or any of the red tiles. Those would all be fine. Um, and I draw a red tile. So that's nice. And then they move the Fellowship. And they get a two here, which is uh, obviously really good. They're happy to not be revealed and, um, yeah, they're losing a random because they don't want to go up to eight, uh, cause Isildur's Bane has not been played and Candles of Corpses has not been played. So I think that's a reasonable choice. They lose a random and it's Strider. Obviously it's never great to lose Strider. This is about what you expect, you know, on the third draw, you expect to lose him after about three draws. So that's fair. Um, Okay. So I'm up to seven points. I use my muster. I thought about using the ring um, to do something, but um, I don't really need it now. My plan for next round, I'm now at seven. My plan for next round, assuming I don't draw into Corsairs of Umbar, which odds are I have 12 cards to draw, like relatively low chances. My plan is to move armies to take Pilar gear and to take Edoras and to take the Shire. That's my thinking right now, um, because I do have Rage of the Dunlendings. Maybe there's a better route. Maybe I just march from Umbar to Dol Amroth and also take the Shire so that Pelargir doesn't matter. Uh, I don't know. Um, it's not It's not clear to me. Um, also, like maybe the Fellowship's going to destroy the ring anyway. So um, I could potentially allocate three eyes here. There are only three eyes in the pool. I draw the ring is mine and new power is rising. Um, and so I get rid of Balrog because who needs that? I already, I've already taken Lorian. Um, how many eyes do you allocate here? Knowing that you have ring is mine, there is Mithril Coat and Sting. So I'm basically just hoping that he gets revealed a bunch. Um, but I definitely need to be able to get to 10 victory points this round. And it's still a good number of actions. So um, I think I end up just allocating one eye and hoping that he doesn't roll enough movement. So I allocate one eye and um, roll one more. And then he gets three. Movement. So three movement and a ring is almost certainly enough. Um, he'd have to get revealed twice in a row for me to stop him. So he moves right away uh, and I do reveal him, which is nice, but he just takes one corruption and gets revealed. Um, and so I'm counting here. I have um, basically all of these can be attacks. I have a ring. I have the mouth of Sauron and um, this can be Rage of the Dunlendings. So... You know, I haven't drawn into Corsairs and, and therefore it's just not, I think I have to take Pilar gear the hard way. I'd be curious if you see other ways of 
getting a bunch of points. Maybe now that I'm reviewing it, what about new power is rising, attack into Fords of Eisen, attack into Helm's Deep, um, and then just go take Pilar Gear? How does that work? So one to play um, new powers rising, maybe another muster. So maybe two dice to power up or think. And then um, that's a pretty good army in or think. And then one die to attack Fords of Eisen, one die to put Helm's Deep under siege, one die to attack Helm's Deep, and then two dice to move from Umbar to Pilar Gear. That's seven dice. So that's seven dice to get three victory points. And it's a little risky to, to be able to take Helm's Deep with that, especially if an Ent gets played. Um, though probably an Ent isn't getting played because they're probably using these to move. Um, basically, the thing that I'm thinking about is how many of these red tiles can I play um, and still get to 10, right? My chances at this point are pretty low because I will have to reveal them next round, next move. They're going to hide, and then they're going to move. And I have to, on that move, reveal them. And if I don't, um, and if I do reveal them, they probably will use Mithril Coat then. I don't know. Um, yeah. So... The, the Helm's Deep attack was a seven die plan. Let's count what it is to take the three the three remaining cities. And by the way, I know that Power of Tom Bombadil has already been played, so I'm not worried about taking out the Shire. It's possible that they could move Grey Havens out to Tower Hills and then defend the Shire from five regulars with Rage of Dunlindings, but um, it's probably okay. So um, one to play Rage of the Dunlindings. One to half movement to move to um, South Erdluin and one to move to West Herondor. So that's um, one one for um, Rage of the Dunlings, one for South Erdluin. That's that's two dice so far. Um, three dice to attack the Shire. Three and a half maybe, or four to attack Pelargir if he musters or moves somebody into Pelargir. Um, five to attack Fords of Eisen, six to move to Westhamnet, six and a half to move to Edoras. So um, it's possible that if I attack into Westhamnet first, then I could get this extra half movement and maybe it could only be six dice. So I think that's why I go for the cities. And I just felt like the cities were just more reliable than a battle in Helm's Deep. I don't see anything faster than seven dice to be able to... Um, get 10 victory points this round. So what that means is if I need seven dice to get, or maybe six with the cities, uh, seven or, or six dice, then that means I have one die at least to um, play um, the ring is mine. And then if I draw into Corsairs, I could potentially take out Corsairs and that would be more efficient. So, because then I can attack into Dol Amroth and then I can go Lamadon Pilar gear and end that way. Okay, anyway, so I play The Ring is Mine, which I believe at this point is the correct play. I'm Obviously, it's a dire situation, and I draw a strategy card hoping to draw Corsairs, which I still have not drawn. Um, and then they hide, and now this is my moment to figure out, do I want to play this other red tile, or do I just want to hope? And I think my thinking is, I have to get to 10. If I don't get to 10, then there's no, like, it doesn't even matter if if they get bad luck on the movement on Mordor. So I just start going towards um, my 10 victory points. I attack into Fords of Eisen, I get a hit, and they pass here. And I I think that's probably wrong. Um, I don't think it matters too much, but um, I play Rage of the Dunlendings next. So I'm just going along with my plan. That might be a minor inaccuracy, but all right, they move now. And this is a key moment because... Um, I have to reveal them, uh, but I don't. So I had, um, or stop them. A red tile would have also been good. So that that was actually somewhat unlucky, uh, given there were only three tiles that didn't reveal them here. But I also had to reveal them last round too to even have a chance at this. 
So yeah, looking at this actually, yeah, it wasn't so crazy that I could that I could hope that I could hope for stopping them this round, given that Strider isn't here. But I don't reveal them, and so now um, that's it, right? Like basically, they have Mithrocote and Sting. Um, at this point, the only hope is for um, them to draw a red tile and then use Mithrocote and Sting, and then redraw into another Mithro into another red tile, um, which is very low probability. Um, I go ahead and use the um, ring to play the other red tile thinking that maybe, um, and then I redraw again, trying to get Corsairs of Umbar, because if I get Corsairs of Umbar, I think I have enough actions to, um, to finish it, but I don't draw Corsairs of Umbar here. And now they can stop me, um, from getting to 10 victory points. They don't have to destroy the ring, but they pass. And so I get to move my armies, um, from West Herondor and to Westamnet. And at this point, this is the moment where if they um, just use this half army movement to go from Osgiliath into Pilargear, um, they effectively stop me, I think, because I need one attack into Pilargear, no, one movement into Edoras. And so, yeah, so I guess they don't, they don't stop me. Um, Okay, so maybe I was wrong. Okay, maybe last round what they had to do is move to Hel Helm's Deep into Westamnet and Osgiliath into Pilar Gear. Yeah, that that would have stopped me because then I would have had to have too many attacks. Anyway, it's minor. Uh, these are very minor issues that like they're still going to win probably because of the hunt pool. But okay, um, I move armies. I I now I'm going to get to ten victory points this round. Um, they go ahead and use their ring to uh, try and destroy the ring. So they used an, their la the second elven ring to try and destroy the ring. And I need to draw a red tile, which is three, three out of 10, um, and then redraw another red tile. So we're 30% times 22%. We're looking at like a 7% chance here. Did I do that right? Even more, 6% chance. Okay. Um, but they draw three. So they destroy the ring. And um, yeah, that, that was pretty close. They were down to their last action that round. Um, and I did get to 10. I would I would have gotten to 10 this round with these last two attacks. Um, so turn seven military victory is pretty good. But turn seven ring destruction is also pretty good. So um, yeah, this was a fun game. Um, I think maybe there were a few minor inaccuracies. Maybe I could have pushed a little bit more, um, in the getting to take over due at, uh, Dale, Erebor and Woodland Realm. But if you have, uh, feedback or thoughts, I would love to, I would love to hear what you would have done differently. Um, here are the statistics. Um, obviously minus, uh, seven on sixes is not great. <laughs> uh, I didn't quite realize that. Uh, and plus, plus four on characters makes them pretty fast, but, um, you know, I was minus one on eyes, so that's good. Yeah. I didn't realize I was minus seven on sixes, but still good game. It was fun to get to play it. I got to keep Palantir Vorthank the whole game, which was, which was always fun for me. Um, didn't help me draw into Corsairs, but maybe if I had, instead of drawing those character cards in, in round six, if I had instead um, drawn uh, strategy cards, that maybe that would have been better. So anyway, great game. And uh, I will continue my coverage of the 2023 World Tournament later. Have a good rest of the day.